Coming up on All About Android, we discuss the Nubia Red Magic 3 gaming phone, the Xiaomi Redmi K20 Pro. Uh, there's new Google Lens features that are really neat. The Huawei Fallout continues. There's a strange Moto Z4 link that just happened. Uh, some of your email and a whole lot more. All About Android is next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Clear. Clear uses your eyes and fingertips instead of traditional ID documents to get you through security faster at airports and stadiums. For your first two months free, visit clearme.com slash Android and enter promo code Android. And by Captera. Find the right tools to make an informed software decision for your business. Visit Captera's free website at captera.com slash AAA. And by ExpressVPN. Protect your online privacy with one click. Yes, it's that easy. For three extra months free with a one-year package, go to expressvpn.com slash allaboutandroid. Hello and welcome to All About Android, episode 422, recorded on Tuesday, May 28th, 2019. Your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Jason Howell. And I'm Ron Richards. And I'm Florence Ion. Hello, the three of us. How are we doing? We're all we're together. Okay. We're all yeah, together. Yeah, we're together. Again. That's what matters. And yes. we are joined this time, this time around. We've got Nick Gray from Fandroid.com joining us from a vehicle. How you doing, Nick? <laughs> I'm doing really good. Thank you guys for having me on. Absolutely. It was really great to meet you at Google I.O. this last year. Um, kind of amazed that we haven't, like our paths have not crossed before, but uh, it was nice talking to you there. And we're like, we got to get you on this show. So I'm super uh, psyched that you get to join us. Now, people who are watching are going to see that you are, in fact, sitting in your vehicle. Uh, explain the genesis behind this. Is this a, like a new a, a new fancy kind of recording studio or what's going on? Or most importantly, can you, can, can you confirm studios. that you're not driving? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I am not driving. No, no Good. driving is happening right now. Uh, I've actually been traveling with my family for the last 14 months full time across the U.S. We've visited 28 states, uh, driven over 40,000 miles wow. and just enjoying the country. We when we decided to move back from Italy a couple years ago, we decided that, hey, we didn't want to have a place to settle down. So might as well travel and just see this beautiful country. That's the way that you do it. it um, but. Okay, so how long, like, is this like, this is what we do now for the rest of our lives? Or do you have like a set time? And then you're going to have to, you know, have that stressful kind of conversation of like where you settle down? Like what, what's the next step and when would that be? We've kind of had that conversation already. Uh, we actually started ha having the conversation about three, four months ago. And um, stay tuned. It, this isn't <laughs> going to be happening for too much longer. Um, yeah. But, you know, it, it's been fun so far. The original plan was just a year. So we're a couple months over a year now. We probably got right. at least another month or two ahead of us. But who knows from there? That's that's amazing. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just I'm kind of in awe. Of, of, Jason, you want to do that. I, it, that you sounds wanna... actually really great. It sounds really <laughs> great. But I would be completely overwhelmed with logistics on that. Like that would be my downfall sure, yeah. is trying to make that all happen. So I'm just I'm in awe of the fact that you can pull that off. Like what an amazing experience for your family to be able to do. Yeah, that. I make my wife do all the logistics because <laughs> I'm doing work. So she's taking care of the, the girls and doing the logistics, planning all uh, of our journeys, uh, where we're camping, where we're, how many miles we're driving a week, all that fun stuff. Uh, while I try to get work done, so. And then she sets the the destination pin on the Google Map, and you go, yep. "All right, navigate to." I do, I guess yep. I'll find out where we're going when we get there. <laughs> the problem is we have so many places pinned on Google Maps. Yeah. Trying to find what the right place to go to is the hard part because there are so right. many amazing destinations. Oh, I can only imagine. Yeah, that's great. Uh, cool. Well, I guess uh, everybody should stay tuned um, to your Twitter to find out where you where you land sometime in the next couple uh, of months. Yeah, our Twitter, or we actually have an Instagram for our travels, uh, at the Gray Adventures. Oh, and okay. And we just document all of our travel stuff on that specific Instagram account. 
Awesome. All right. Well, Nick, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you for hopping on with us and uh, joining us as we talk about all of the news this week. And that's ample setup, I think, to uh, get Victor to take us to the news this week. Mm. I know where our destination for Android news is today. Where? It's more Huawei. Huawei. Oh, it's hu yeah. Huawei. That -a -way. That -a -way. Huawei. Huawei. Which way? Huawei. Huawei. Uh, <laughs> and and undoubtedly, like every time we ever talk about Huawei, we get enough people emailing in about the thing we're actually talking about, and then another you know number of people emailing us telling us we're pronouncing it wrong. So sorry. Uh, the fallout of the U.S. ban on doing business with Huawei continues. Uh, just a bunch of, of things happening here. The SD Association Trade Group has removed Huawei from uh, from the group. This basically means wow. that no SD, no micro SD card support in future Huawei devices. It turns out that the company already has its proprietary nano uh, memory cards to fill the void. And who knows if they've been stockpiling or they whatever. They had a plan B all this time. <laughs> yeah, they really did. They, you know, they thought yeah, about like it. Yeah, like everything is like, they had a plan B, guys. Don't worry. They had a Huawei plan B. has something to replace this. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how, how well that works for Huawei. Um, also, the Wi-Fi Alliance has restricted Huawei's membership temporarily. I don't know why that's not permanent, like all the other companies. You know, companies that are restricted from doing, have restricted themselves uh, from doing business with Huawei include Google, Arm, Intel, Qualcomm, Broadcom. I mean, the list just keeps getting bigger and bigger and uh, just not looking so good for for Huawei. But I think feel like in the last couple of days, things have kind of settled down a little bit, at least not, not every single news you know uh, outlet is reporting on this 24-7 like they were when all of this news was uh, breaking. Um, Nick, what what are your thoughts on this? I know you tweeted a little bit about this when it was happening, but... I mean, you've been exposed to a lot of Huawei phones. Huawei, how do you pronounce it? I'm curious to know how you pronounce it and what you think of this story. Um, I pronounce it Huawei, which I know is wrong, uh, but it's better than what most people do. So I'm good with that. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's it's been a crazy, uh, I think like a week and a half now since the first news broke that, you know, Google had revoked their Android license. And uh, it seems every day there's been something new, something new. I mean, with everything that's gone down, you know, we were at first thinking that, hey, they might be able to pull this off, doing something on their own. But, you know, not being able to, you know, certify devices for, for Wi-Fi, for Bluetooth. I mean, they wouldn't even be able to make their smartwatches anymore. How do you have a smartwatch? No. How do you have a smartwatch without Bluetooth? Yeah. Smartphones, but all their other connected devices. I mean, it's it's pretty ridiculous at this point. I mean, technically, they would get away with it if they simply release them in China, since most other companies can't really get China to adhere to IP regulations over there. So, I mean, they could definitely still be successful within China doing their own thing. But outside of China, they're going to run into a lot of hurdles. Yeah, um, you know, and they have, like like we were just talking about, they have been kind of working on these kind of runaround sort of solutions in case things fall fall down as much as they are right now falling over for the company. Uh, there was the their replacement OS, which apparently is codenamed Hongmeng, and uh, Huawei's Enterprise Business Group VP in the Middle East told Tech Radar. Uh, this was a quote. The OS was ready in January 2018. This was our plan B, as you said, Flo. Uh, we did not want to bring the OS to the market as we had a strong relationship with Google and others and did not want to ruin the relationship. Now we are rolling it out next month. Like, now we're burning all what? the bridges. What? I love, I love, I love that quote so much because it also verified what we speculated last week, at least, which is that Huawei's been prepping for this. They knew this was coming. Now, now they've they've been prepping for this. They knew this was coming. And for for this guy, I wish I wrote down his name, and I'm sorry, Lot guy. Uh, but for him to say suddenly we're rolling it out next month makes you think, wow, they're really prepared, much more prepared than we thought they were. Huawei officially followed up though to Tech Radar to say in an official statement it would actually be late 2019, early 2020. Uh, <laughs> in other words, don't listen to that guy. Well, no, but. but 
Maybe listen to that guy. Maybe. He's the guy who's inside working and he's like, uh, we've got the OS ready. And yes, there's, you, you know, there, there, are pe there are people with inside the company saying, no, slow down. We need to do the rollout, stuff like that. But like if they've been sitting on this for over a year, that dude is ready. They're ready to go with it and they're pissed. And I think that makes them even more dangerous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so maybe listen to that guy. That's that's good. May, maybe good advice. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we should. Uh, so anyways, more, more contradiction there, but we'll, we'll see where that leads. But Flo, I think this is really interesting because it really kind of culminated, uh, all this stuff happened at the same time as Huawei's big device, which we talked about barely last week, but take it away. So, of course, all this political theater is kind of has a domino effect across the industry, as you will. So Honor, as you may remember, another one of the Huawei arm brands, as I like to call them. Uh, last week, it was announced to rave reviews might not end up actually coming outside of China. So bad timing, probably miss, they probably missed the window to get that Google certification in time before the ban anyway. So it's possibly can happen within the next 90-day uh, extension that's been granted since last week but there's no there's no real telling so maybe Nick you could guide us a little bit through the fantasy of this honor 20 and what it is that uh, that I guess we're missing out on <laughs> that will never yeah I got see. a chance to play with it uh, actually they had a they had a briefing right around the uh, Google IO time when I was in California. Uh, so got the chance to test out the device. And, you know, if, if you've ever used an Honor smartphone, uh, they're actually pretty good for what they are. I mean, they're they're Huawei's mid-range brand, but typically these Honor uh, 20 devices or their before it was the Honor 9, 10, and now they've skipped all the way up to 20. These are their essentially their one plus competitors. So if you look at the specs of this phone, mm -hmm. it pretty much has everything that you would want from a one plus device, uh, except for that, you know, really high end screen. But the performance is top notch. But the one killer thing that they weren't ready to announce when I got my hands on with the phone was the pricing. And once OnePlus announced the pricing of the 7 Pro, you know, $670, they announced the price of uh, the Honor 20 a week later. And over in Europe, they undercut it by 110 euro. And if you look spec for spec, besides the display, the Honor 20 is a better phone. Uh, and definitely has a better camera as well. So yeah. if if it does get released in Europe, it's definitely one of the phones to consider buying if you don't really want to spend that price for the OnePlus 7 Pro. All my friends that live in Europe tell me that the one thing they did when they got there, the first thing they did was get a Huawei or an Honor device because it's just that good. Um, I've never had that privilege outside of reviewing it, but who knows? I guess now I won't have that privilege. Well, you might. Oh, no. You might. <laughs> I mean, there's always there's always a possibility that everything turns around. It, it different. Everything. It'll be a different experience. Never yeah. say. Maybe you'll find you're you're that guy in the company who'll hook you up with one. Mm. Some guy in the some guy in the company will be like, we need to get her one, and never say never, Flo. <laughs> You never know. <laughs> you never know. Um, I had I got the the what was the honor. It was an Honor device about three or four years the ago. The Honor 8, the Honor 8 was like Honor super 8. good. That's what it was. I yeah. loved that little phone. And it wasn't yeah, super it was expensive either. Yeah. It looked like a high-end phone. And I think that's, I mean, I guess that's what the Pixel 3a is trying to do. But yeah. No, the Honor 8 it had at the time the was, a, was a really great phone for an awesome price. And the design, you know, it that was... It had that like swooshy color on the back with the the, the all glass design. It's um, all about the swooshy the swooshy color. You get those dynamic colors and those like kind of those th make it look different. Yeah. Like that's it's such a great yeah. product strategy when you think about it. You know, like make it look physically different than the other phones at that same yeah. price range, and it will stand out. You know, and and then of course put in a good camera and all that sort of stuff. But uh, you know, like Honor definitely led the way of like, hey, what is that? You know, and that kind of reaction from a phone. Yeah, swooshy yeah, colors. With, uh, with the yeah. Honor 20, their their new thing with the design was an extra depth layer. So when you look at the back, it looks like it's a little bit more three-dimensional. It looks deeper than what it actually is. There's no specific like holographic design or anything inside of there. But when you look at it, you're it seems like you're looking at least a half inch into the phone, just the way they have that depth layer in there that reflects mm -hmm. the light. That sounds neat. Uh, who knows when we'll see it. <laughs> 
<laughs> Who if knows ever. if we will see it here? Yeah, if ever here in the all US, I know but still. is it, I get I get kind of jealous when I get to see all these really cool phones from my friends who are overseas. Mm-hmm. I definitely they're very cool compared to ours. We have a ways well, to you go. You can always import them. Yeah, you buy them always a lot. No, but you can always buy. I'm them on, on Big Red, Amazon so I don't really have. A lot of you know, many yeah. options there at all. Yeah. Yeah. You got to get off that. There's your problem. <laughs> There's your problem, yep. though. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, Ron, you got the next one. Yeah. Well, Flo, you mentioned the Pixel 3a. And it was funny. You remember last week I said how a friend of mine who's been iOS, uh, an iOS user, but an Android curious. Well, he took the plunge and he got the Pixel 3a and he's been raving in my ear for the past five days about it. And one of the things he keeps going back to is how great the camera is. And he can't believe how great the camera is at the price point that the phone is. And so, Nick, you actually spent a lot of time with the Pixel 3a camera and you actually compared it uh, to the Galaxy S10 Plus camera. Uh, can you tell us what you found? Is 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 my friend's uh, raving fair? Is it actually as good of a camera as it's cracked up to be? Uh, it is as good as a camera as it's cracked up to be. So I compared it to the Galaxy S10 Plus and also to the original Pixel 3. Uh, and Google's um, notion or their statement that it is the same camera on the back of the phone definitely stands up. I took side-by-side pictures with the Pixel 3 and the Pixel 3a. They're pretty much identical, I mean, besides some like slight timing things. Uh, but then comparing it to the Galaxy S10 Plus, I mean, this thing can go head to head against that device. Uh, the color saturation is a little bit different. Samsung is always a little bit more punchier uh, and adding a little bit more contrast. Uh, but I mean, really that comes down to personal taste. Uh, the, the one thing that you do get with the Samsung phone, it is a thousand dollar phone and it does have those extra two sensors on the back. So you do have the 2X telephoto and then the ultra wide, which I am a huge yeah, fan of. Me too. Uh, so if, if you have the money to spend and you want those extra features, it's definitely worth it. But if you want to only spend $400, this yeah. is the phone to beat. I mean, this you can't go wrong with this. And so I was in New York and uh, my cousin was asking for a device recommendation. She's using an iPhone and uh, uh, she's using iPhone 10. And for her, it was simply too heavy. It wasn't the size, it was just the weight of it. And I was like, do you mind having a plastic phone and a camera that's better than the iPhone? And she went out and bought it the next day. And she's been sending me uh, messages throughout the week. She's like, I can't believe how good this camera is for the price. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. if if Google can deliver this, I mean, there's no reason why we actually need thousand dollar phones anymore unless you really just need those specs to for specs sake. They really don't do anything if the software is not right. And and that's really the point. That's really the selling point of this phone is that realistically, the majority of customers out there are more in line with middle of the road, want to spend four to five hundred, you know, maybe five hundred dollars, four hundred. It seems to be a sweet spot and don't even know what sensors mean on a camera or like necessarily need a telephoto or wide angle lens or anything. They just want to take good pictures. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I feel like that if they target at that market, you could see the Android market share, at least the pixel sales market share increase because you could really, you know, like it, it serves such a middle of the road customer and somebody like you mentioned who really is into photography and really wants those extra sensors, they're going to spend the extra money because that's something that matters to them. Uh, but for most people, that just doesn't matter. So I will say that after holding the Pixel 3a, uh, checking out my friends, uh, it is very plastic. It definitely, I mean, I, I, I realized that my hand has gotten used to flagships yeah. and I was like, oh, this feels different. <laughs> oh, it totally feels different. But, you know, yeah. for, like, um, like I think I've said in, in previous episodes, like I'm so used now, I'm so used to having my phones in a case. I yeah. never even know the difference. Like literally my mind is tricked when I'm, when I'm using this phone with this case, cause it's the same as yeah. the one on my three XL. And, uh, I'd like, I, I have not really I can think of maybe two or three times where I even made the realization that I'm not using the phone I'm used to using. Uh, I still haven't swapped it out. I've already recorded this week Hmm. on hands on tech. I've got a comparison of the three a XL and the three XL, just like a line by line comparison of it. And, uh, you know, I recorded that late last week. It's going to go up in a few days. Um, but I still haven't swapped out because I have no need to. I'm like, well, it's kind of more of a pain in the butt to like switch my sw- my sim over and everything like that. I'll just keep it here because it's fine. 
<laughs> and and the ca- the case point is absolutely fair. It's like once you put it on, gotcha. that kind of equalizes it. Um, it did feel lighter to me, but he was it's raving about lighter. the battery. He was raving about the battery life too. He's yeah. like he's like, man, this is phone lasts forever. Like it's it's. I really think, and it's funny because in our conversation last week about it, he made he compared it to the holiest of holy phones, the Nexus Five. And now I'm seeing all these articles pop up of uh, of people saying, you know, is is the three A the return to the uh, of the Nexus phone? Yeah. Um, and the three A is making a run for its money. Being being, an, being a Hall of Fame qual- caliber phone, I think. So I know it's yeah. early, but I'm just saying so yeah. far so good. Yeah. I mean, even even some of the Googlers that I talked to uh, at Google I.O. brought up Nexus. Not m- not me bringing it up, just being like, I really think that, you know, this this will appeal to the same people in the way that the Nexus did. This is a great develop. This is a Google phone and it's very developer friendly because it's a lower cost phone as well. So um, yeah. might not be a true Nexus, but kind of feels that way in spirit it seems like it is so cool well it looks like uh, the 3a is producing uh, images that go toe to toe with the s10 plus so thank you if people want to find that uh go to fandroid.com and you can see uh nick's side-by-side comparison let's take just a break a little plug oh, oh yeah absolutely I, I'm go actually for it. gonna i i just the other day i was recording a comparison with the OnePlus 7 Pro that's going to be coming out later this week. Oh, okay. Uh, just as a spoiler, uh, the Pixel 3a takes much better pictures mm-hmm. than yeah. the wow. Galaxy, just not the Galaxy, the OnePlus 7 but Pro. But does it so. have 12 gigs of RAM? <laughs> no, it does not. <laughs> yes, you can fault the 3a for a lot of things. I think the one thing you, you won't be able to fault, fault it for it? is his camera. <laughs> you know, time and time again, that if if the three and the three XL camera uh, were already being seen as the best smartphone camera on the market, then the three A will too, because it's the same camera. Yeah. So uh, that's just going to keep happening, and that's for four hundred dollars. It just kind of blows my mind. Uh, let's take a break. We'll thank the sponsor, and then we'll get into some hardware. Most of this show is hardware. If you haven't noticed, that was even the no, the. Uh, the news section and it still ended up in hardware. So sometimes some weeks that's just the way it turns out. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Clear, a new sponsor of the show. We are super stoked to welcome Clear to the show. Clear uses your eyes and your fingertips instead of traditional ID documents uh, to get you through security faster at airports and stadiums. Clear gets you through security with the tap of your fingers so you can get to your gate faster and reduce pre-flight stress. We all know what it's like to be stuck in that whole rat race, and it's very stressful. Anything that you can do to cut down on the stress, and that's what Clear is all about. Clear replaces the need for physical ID cards using your eyes and fingertips to get through security because you are, you are the best ID out there. It's easy to sign up. You create your account online before you go to the airport. Uh, Once you get to the airport, a Clear ambassador helps you finish the process, and then you can immediately use Clear. If you're traveling with your family, you can add up to three adult family members at a discounted rate. Also, kids under 18 are free. That's awesome. Uh, Clear helps you get through security faster at more than 40 airports and stadiums across the country. More being added every day. And right now, listeners of the show can get their first two months free by visiting Clearme dot com slash android make sure you enter the promo code android that's c-l-e-a-r-m-e clearme dot com slash android and use the promo code android for your free two months of clear and we thank clear for their support and welcome them welcome them to the show uh welcome clear and uh check out clearme dot com slash android to find out more all right and with that it's time for the first block of hardware. In a week filled with huge news, I thought I really thought we needed to, to lead with the most important technology story that I've seen in a very long time. Walmart... I had a lot of people ask me about this one, by I'm, the way. I, honestly, I'm very curious. Walmart is now selling its own trio of branded Android tablets... Who said tablets were dead? Uh, Walmart Not Walmart. On. <laughs> Not Walmart. It's the Walmart On, O-N-N. That's so, the on, worst part of this whole story, on, by the way. Walmart On. It's like you held the N too much mm. and your keyboard is really say, sensitive. You just it's, like, it. it's like, say what you will about Walmart and their business practices, but come on, no one should roll out a product called On. On. <laughs> it's, 
Turn it on. Unless it's like, unless it's like a yoga breathing kind of meditation <laughs> kind of product, it should not be called on. That's the om, um, the Walmart om. Um, um. um. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> so they have so it's a it's a uh, a trio I suppose there's an 8 inch tablet that that'll be priced at $64. So these wow. are inexpensive devices that'll have 1280 by 800 IPS display an unnamed wow. 1.3 gigahertz uh, quad core processor 2 gigs of ram 16 gigs of storage uh, a, a super high resolution 0.3 megapixel front facing camera. Oh. Don't use that. Uh, two megapixel I'm sorry, rear facing camera. Did you mean camera. to say VGA? <laughs> That's basically what that is, right? Uh, and then there is a larger 10.1 inch version uh, that has the same specs, just the larger display, of course. That's seventy nine dollars for so for fifteen dollars more, you get a uh, larger larger display. And then I think the third one isn't available yet. Only only one, only left. one left. Act now. <laughs> If you're watching right now, get that sucker. Um, this is a by the way, this is a really significant thing because yeah, people want these tablets. They want something that they can just bring home and read on and watch a Netflix watch or a, a Hulu. Yeah, and that's well, it. Well, no, that's well, the give only to their kids. It. Check that flow though. Walmart wants them to take it home and watch a Voodoo because Walmart owns Voodoo. Oh, oh good point. I didn't. Even, I forgot nice. about that. You connected yeah. so, some dots there. So, right? Yeah, so like, so for the past year or so, there have been rumors that Walmart was flirting with the streaming service, creating a Walmart branded streaming service. And I think earlier this year they backed off those plans because they had such a they had bought Voodoo and had such an investment in that. And so then I think it was in May I saw a Forbes article, a couple of other articles talking about how Walmart is going to be doing original programming through Voodoo. And mm. now they're selling ta tablets that happen to be able to play video. Like this is them trying to create content for the middle of the country that lives and dies at Walmart. Walmart and they're going to make the, Walmart the Amazon you know, like, for the Walmart folk. Right. Yeah, exactly. The Amazon Basically. Fire tablet. Yeah. And yeah. so instead of from Walmart, you would go to, you would go to, excuse me, instead of Amazon, you would go to Walmart, you would buy this for about the same price as a Kindle, two different yeah. varieties. It comes with Android. So it's a little more customizable in that sense. Right. It's, it it's more of a stock of version of Android. Whereas when you get the Amazon Fire tablet, it's like Amazon's own you know fork of android so this yeah, and, arguably and gives you a little bit more control over the device that has its negatives and its positives because of course the thing that always worries us about these sort of devices are what is their update schedule what yeah. is the software updates look like and you know uh will a project trouble <laughs> well. extend to walmart's selection of tablets but the thing is consumers are not going to Excuse me. We can't. We have to stop calling them consumers because it's too jargony. People, <laughs> people don't. Most people are. Uh, they don't know about this stuff really that yeah. goes on behind the scenes. Yeah. And also, when they say turn the TV on, they go turn the TV on. Turn. The <laughs> turn it on. <laughs> on. It did say. I want to know what sorry, the go. little icon is. The little Walmart icon. Yes. <laughs> on the screenshot, there's a little there, button, the, like a Walmart the, button or something, right? Uh, down, down the left-hand corner. Yeah. What is that? Yeah, and I'm what sure it um, takes you. That? Maybe it takes you to the website. <laughs> it's like I gotta buy something right now, and I don't want to well, deal I was with Chrome. Say it's probably like Amazon or Google tablets where they have rewards for you because I just realized the last oh. thing I bought, the last and only thing I bought from Walmart. A couple months ago was the Mi Box, and I got Voodoo credit. Oh, yeah. so I wonder if it's like it's a rewards yeah. portal, right? Could More be. savings at Could your be. shop of choice. Could be. Oh, uh, Chumley in chat uh, says maybe it's a link to tech support. Maybe some, maybe a device like oh, this like might on the have Kindle? some sort of uh, easy access to tech support. Possibly. Or I don't a know. link to buy things. I would on like Walmart. to see how Walmart yeah, handles that. Yeah, link to further. buy things at Walmart.com. Yeah. Uh, that would make a lot of sense too, right? It's or it could just be the on button. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you, you're going to... I'm just never really gonna holding on. on. I'm really holding on to that. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to be a fly on the wall of that meeting. Like, how did that happen? How did it become on? 
Mm -hmm. on, on. But um, at that price point, you, you got a lot of people who are going to be like, oh, a tablet, and they'll just grab it and buy it. Honestly, at so. that price point, I'm thinking about buying it on the company card and reviewing it because I'm cu yeah. really curious to know. I'm really curious. I'd There's only really one curious curious left in your area, Jason. Only one left. Okay, you guys do the rest of the show. I'm going to order Walmart on tablet. But also, you're sure talking about Flo being in that meeting. I'm sure someone at Walmart, Walmart was like, are you guys looking? Handful. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Collision. <laughs> Walmart you know. already sells a handful of tablets that are under well under a hundred dollars. So I, I'm right. not sure if they're trying to push some of their, the other competitors out of the space. I think they have a Lenovo tablet that's in there, and a couple others that are like eighty to, or sixty five to yeah. eighty bucks as well. That's a good so point. There's already competition on the Walmart shelves for a tablet at this price point. So I'm not sure what their game plan really is. Besides, you know, a you know a a way for people to get into voodoo a little bit more if they have that completely tied in. Yeah, does well, yeah, Walmart... like Amazon. You, you know, wanna... It's got it's to gotta be someone... There, someone at Walmart said, look at what Amazon is doing. People are buying those tablets. Mm -hmm, they're, mm -hmm. they're, 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 they're grabbing those customers. They're getting their information. They're having them register an account. Like, this is... Mm -hmm. that, it's the ultimate move for this type of business. Yeah. Um, and in the in the article that, that I read about this, they did point out that it includes Walmart's, quote, app suite. And at the time when I read that, I was like, cool. well, what the heck is that? So Voodoo would obviously be in there. I wonder if Walmart also owns, you know, some of those like a, like some sort of like a, a book, uh, a book service or I, I don't know. I guess I'm not very brushed. I bet you just Walmart comes with Kobo books knowledge. on it. Which yeah, is fine. Right. A couple of books is good. I yeah. use it because I don't want to use Amazon anymore. So. Yeah, but that but that would make sense that they would make some deals to make it a toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe competitor in some cases Yeah, uh, by comparison. Cool. All right. Well, that was a lot more excitement about the Walmart tablet than I expected to get during this during this segment, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> Flo, you got that. It's, it's a power move. That's why. It's right. a total It's a total power move. It's like, it's like bringing cookies to somebody when they come in and shutting the door behind them. Like... It's a power move. Yes. <laughs> anyway, I should probably go on to the next <laughs> news item. Um, I was hoping you guys would get that, and at, that didn't work. So instead, <laughs> I will talk about something you will get, with the, which is Xiaomi. And of course, we always talk on this show about little, little hardware companies outside of the U.S. that are just really popular. Um, well, Xiaomi has announced a few new devices that are sure to become popular. The Redmi K20 Pro, which Nick actually wrote about. But before we throw it to you, Nick, this is dubbed the flagship killer 2.0. Um, I can't recall how many handsets have been called the flagship killer up until yeah, now. Kind of a thing that now, is definitely yeah. the statute of limitations on that phrasing, um, I think, is expired and... We need new phrasing, folks. Um, it's got a 6.39 inch full HD plus AMOLED display, a pop up 20 megapixel selfie camera, which that other quote unquote flagship killer also has, um, in display fingerprint sensor, hmm, sounds familiar, 48 megapixel and 13 megapixel ultra wide. Uh, front facing, excuse me, rear facing camera plus an eight megapixel 2X telephoto, Snapdragon 855 on the inside, six or eight gigs of RAM, 64 or 256 gigs of storage, and a big 4,000 milliamp battery. It's selling in China starting at $361 USD, which is a steal at this point. Anything under $400, I consider a steal at this point. Nick, do you think it's worth the 361 USD? I I, I think this is worth 661 USD. Oh, I wow. Mean, okay. It, okay. I Explain mean, this, why. Spec for spec, this is the same as the Honor 20 Pro. So if, if the Honor 20 Pro over in Europe is selling for uh, 600 euro or so, uh, this one here would be selling for uh, 320 euro. So it honor honors kind of undercut one plus, uh, with their price, but this undercuts it by another $150 and spec for spec. This is the same phone as the honor 20 pro, except it's the Qualcomm processor instead of the Kirin. Instead of the Kirin. Uh, I am always interested in getting my hands on some of these Xiaomi phones. Uh, it never happens, but, um, I don't know. Do, do they come across your, 
like your path very often. Your Nick? desk, your yeah. your RV desk. <laughs> like I, I, I would RV love desk. to be, have the chance to review, do more hands on and, and review time with some of the Xiaomi phones, but I guess. I guess I'm not in touch I've, with the right people. I've used a couple of them over the years. Uh, over when I was in Europe, it was a lot easier to get my hands on yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the, the last Xiaomi phone was the Pocophone F1 uh, from last year, which was a great phone except for that camera, which was garbage. Uh, but this this honestly undercuts the price of the Pocophone. So anyone who thought the Pocophone was an incredible deal, this is a better phone. It's with 2019 specs and a design yeah. rather than that polycarbonate piece of junk that the Pocophone was. This is a glass back design for anyone who really loves that and a triple camera on the back. I mean, this, as far as hardware goes and build construction, Xiaomi's always been uh, one of the top players yeah. after, you know, their first or second year of their first devices coming out. Um, I'm honestly really excited about it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get my hands on it. Uh, there's no right. indication yet as to if it's coming to Europe. Definitely not the U.S., but their Xiaomi's been bo doing a huge push in Europe and in the U.K. I think their mm -hmm. last quarterly report showed that they had a massive increase in sales now that they're doing this push into Europe. So with a phone like this, I think they and, you know, Honor and Huawei on the brink of you know, destruction, it looks like they could actually be I mean, Xiaomi's number five right now. So they could push up to number four or number three if Huawei's having issues this year. Yes, indeed. Um, it's kind of like the arena, but with the hardware. Um, mm, <laughs> stakes are a little higher, I'd stakes say. Stakes are just a little bit higher. Just a little bit. Trade embargoes happen there and not in our arena. Yeah, so. yeah. The stakes are way higher. Uh, Ron, you got the next one. So, so I just wish, had we known the Galaxy Fold would be so drama-filled, I would have pressed for like some sort of bumper or some sort of soap opera-like right. music whenever we talk about it. Okay. But uh, so, so we talked about, uh, I think it was last week or two weeks ago, we talked about how the Galaxy Fold uh, is being delayed and about how they, you know, they're they working to fix the problems from initially uh, launched. Well, now the latest chapter in the Galaxy Fold drama is that uh, it is delayed again, this time without an actual date. Uh, the release schedule has not been decided, and we are in a, we are in, we are in a position to announce the lost launch schedule in a few weeks. So basically, no release date. Um, it's the date has not been decided. In a few weeks, they'll be coming out when it will release. Um, and for those who don't remember, it was originally scheduled to come out April 26, then they then delayed to sometime mm -hmm. in June. So now, likely, it's looking like July or beyond. Uh, and as if you, your confidence wasn't already shook from this, uh, Best Buy canceled all pre-orders for the device last week. And listen, Best Buy does not like to part with their pre-order yeah, money. Like, so the fa yeah, the fact that they did that is not a good sign for this uh, Galaxy Fold. Um, so Nick, uh, were, did you have one on order? Were you waiting for your Galaxy Fold or did you get to break one of the prototypes? I did not get to break one of the prototypes. I did not pre-order it, and I've not even touched it. I, I saw it behind glass for about three minutes, and that's <laughs> been my closest encounter with it. Uh, it's kind of disappointing. I mean, we were all looking forward to, you know, what this first generation of devices was going to be like, and obviously the technology isn't ready yet. Yeah. Yep. And not Who knows only is if it, it not ever ready. will be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and not only is it not, re not ready yet, it's not ready to be, even be announced. So uh, who knows? I think July is optimistic at this point. And honestly, putting all the jokes aside and the drama aside, if I had to give Samsung advice, it would be stop, take your time, <laughs> reset expectations, you know, and fix it. That that would be my advice. But um, but luckily, we've got breaking news to, to stop me giving advice. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah, you know what? You know what, Victor? Let's let's call an audible. Let's do some breaking news instead. Because I, I think I think uh, I think we got some breaking news. It's it's time for some breaking news. This so. is why you want to watch live because <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Good. I'm happy we got that in there. Sorry to make you sweat there, Victor. Um, well, today I learned. Uh, Evaluate. I got to organize the spin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got a little work to do after the show. I understand. Uh, I don't know if it's really breaking news, but hey, it was a reason to, to play it. Um, Wade, was it Wade County? No, it was a uh, Mars worm, maybe. I'm not sure who it was in chat. No, it was Chumley. Chumley, Chumley. Chumley pointed out that there is a third Walmart tablet on device. <sighs> A 10.1-inch tablet. A third with sibling. A third that we didn't talk about with detachable keyboard. 
This Whoa, is a productivity a oh tablet. Oh, uh, does all it on run productivity Chrome OS? Tablet, then... $99. And there's six left. So not many people are ordering these compared to the other ones. I put the link in the show notes uh, for you. $99 is way too much money. Let's see. $99 probably is way too much money. We'll get there in a second here. But uh, that is a fancy keyboard. It's got the little the little case, the little the tri the triangle uh, yeah, support. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that looks like a HP Chromebook. Yeah. Only five left, according to my my uh, loading here. How? Uh, no, it's in stock yeah. in New Jersey. So this is an Android, you know, keyboard. So of course you're not going to have a, a touchpad on there necessarily. Uh, I wonder. I do wonder how squishy yes. those keys are. Ha hang on, can we can we just pause for a moment with, yeah. with the breaking news? <laughs> because if you click on the the manufacturer of on. Uh -huh. You will find that not only they on is this is not their first uh, device, but they also make TVs, so and they thing. also make portable battery packs and a okay. PC headset. All right, and so the, so like it looks like this is Walmart's. Um, what's what's Best Buy's uh, TV brand? Insignia. Insignia. This is Walmart's Insignia. Oh, is that? That's what it is. Ins I didn't know yeah. Insignia. Okay. There are si now there I know. 16, <laughs> there are sixteen pages of on products. <laughs> This is bananas. <laughs> we just didn't I know. Like I mean, I've didn't crossed know. into a world that I would never, never even stumble into. Was that an on VR headset? Cases, wireless yeah, chargers. The, uh, up the, the mount virtual reality headset for $5. <laughs> Dang, oh, yeah. I'm sure that gives you a heck of an experience. I think it's just to work with Samsung. Yeah, yeah. Put a phone. Uh, yeah. It's, put a phone in it. It's, right? like it's got to be a cardboard viewer. You know what I mean? It's, you know, this is this is a really interesting part of the market that we don't often dive into. I think it's important to know that, like, we come from a really different. Um, oh, privilege! Yeah, we oh, have, for sure. we have yeah. so much financial privilege yeah. in our tech usage, and like, we forget that there are these. There's the propagation of these like more affordable tech that we really should look at. Yeah, because like that's yeah, what people no. are actually buying. I think because well, the th yeah, because the thing is that people people go to the store and they might not mm -hmm. have they probably don't have a brand affiliation and they need a TV or I don't know they need the on cassette tape recorder with built in microphone or a two pack of ninety minute audio cassettes. Like what is oh. this? This is crazy. This yeah, is now like you're speaking my language. <laughs> a two pack of ninety minute audio they, cassettes. They sell they sell everything. They sell here's a uh, two. Two line white triplex tele telephone modem and fax adapter. One of those things you plug into a phone jack to allow three phones plug into. Like this is literally like where Radio Shack is now. Yeah, I was yeah, about kind to of say. Is. Of course, Walmart took it over for one radio. Oh, well, yeah. Radio Shack's dying, so we might as well fill the niche. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Uh, I love it. I think I think I probably will order one of these Android tablets and and uh, take it for a spin. I'm really Jason, curious. Jason, you know. need to go to a Walmart. You need to go do, do some boats on the ground because, like, oh, I yeah. haven't been in a Walmart in a long time myself. I don't hey, listen, have one nearby. Yeah. I only have Target. Hey, hey Flo, how do, how much did that wireless charging stand for your Pixel cost? <laughs> Ninety dollars. <laughs> Oh, because there's an on five watt wireless charging stand for for key key or QI enabled cell phones fourteen eighty eight. Five watts is slow. I know. <laughs> I think I saw another one for ten bucks. Yeah, come on. <laughs> is that one was, faster? <laughs> five no. watts. Same. No, is, same. I, mean, look, I mean, this is bridging the gap. I mean, honestly, this is bridging the gap. The tech gap. This is yeah. what it is. This is this is you know. I mean, they're they're. There are people who they need a cell phone, a charger, and they're going to buy the cheapest one they can find, and it's yeah. going to be an on. On. Um. <laughs> Crazy. Every time Ron says that, I giggle. It's because it's. I keep thinking his his connection is like breaking up or something. On. on. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, we got some email. Dan Edwards wrote in, and I'm sure y'all will have some uh, thoughts on this. The, the Dan says the announcement that Google made at Google I/O that the Nest Developer API would be going away felt like a slap in the face. So much of the keynote was devoted to privacy and my control over my data. Currently, I use the Nest API with Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi to access my data that is collected by Nest. Home Assistant can use Google APIs to access the vast amount of data collected by my Pixel phone. I don't mind sharing that data with Google and Nest, but that data should always be mine to access and use. I know Google has backpedaled a bit 
since then, saying my current access will always work. But that first announcement has troubled me. It shows that in the name of privacy, they're willing to cut out access to my data. I should be the one who has the final say about who I trust to share my data with, not Google. Part of my trust in Google is that they will both protect the data they have about me and always allow me access to it. That was exactly what was said at Google I.O., but Google's actions are not quite living up to that promise. Until I see clear evidence from Google that they are going to back up what was said at Google I.O., I am holding off on further Google purchases. I have hoped that this was just a misstep in the name of user data privacy, and Google will follow through with the Google I.O. keynote promises. Hmm. Those are harsh Strong words. words. Strong, Strong words, words, Dan. Uh, I mean, I mean, we saw a lot of chatter after I.O. that said that that I.O. was the death of Nest and that yeah. a lot of this was the reason was the reason because of it. Yeah, I don't know. You know, they're making they, they make it. A, I, I feel like Dan might be disappointed because they're they, they I don't they don't often make a misstep in a, as big of a stage as that, that they must have. They have a reason and they must have thought it out. And yeah, it's a bummer. Yeah. Uh, Nick, what do you think? Should should Google should Google promise to users that they should always have, you know, all access to their data in, in the ways that, that Dan is, is professing here? What do you think? Uh, that would be nice if we lived in a perfect world. But, I mean, uh, Google does a much better job than most uh, software companies at telling you what data they have on you and giving you access to it. So, yeah, we would always like more to be able to have access to that and be able to use it in different ways. But honestly, when was the last time anyone questioned what data Amazon has on them and tried to dig in to see what they, what information that is? Google does a much better job than anybody else, yeah. so they should be held accountable for that. But on the flip side, they're doing they're going far and beyond what everyone else is doing. So to say Google should be giving us more is I don't I don't know like. It's a double-edged sword sometimes when you start to say they're not doing enough, but they're the leaders in the space, though. Yeah, that's that's a really good point. Um, you know, it's a blessing. It's a blessing and a curse. Yeah. So all of these moves were made to make Nest more uh, privacy-minded and more secure. The idea of being to cut off all that access to third parties that aren't updating the APIs that aren't taking care of the backend code to kind of like make sure that there's no way to basically penetrate those virtual walls mm -hmm. that are put up. And I think that's why Google is basically deprecating. All. And I know it's it's been super frustrating for developers and for people who have very um, expansive and um, vast setups, but that's not who Google's targeting with this with this hardware, Google's targeting people. And in order to target people, they have to make this stuff a lot easier to manage both on their end and the user's end. And I know that there's been, there's just been so much frustration with this Nest thing, but after looking into it and kind of getting more, um, just getting more clarification from Google about like what's changing and what's going on, it's, it sounds to me like it's just going to make, it's actually going to make my life easier because I'm just going to need one app to manage everything. Hmm. Well, there we go. There we have it. Hopefully that satisfies you, Dan, and you have no more, no more things to complain about, right? <laughs> Ever right? in life. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's the answer to all of your problems. All right, Ron, you got the ad. All right, we want to thank Captera for sponsoring this episode of All About Android. Uh, Captera is the leading free online resource to help you find the best software solutions for your business. And listen, maybe you're just starting out or maybe your business is growing and it's time to change the software you're, you're using or you'd like to uh, add software. Whatever your business need is, Captera is there to help. You can read thousands of real software reviews and find the right software for your business at captera.com slash AAA. Captera has over 900,000 reviews of products with 30,000 fresh reviews available each month. You can discover everything you need to make an informed decision. You can search more than 700 specific categories of software, content management systems, email marketing, IT service, SEO, and workflow management, just to name a few. Once you choose a category, you can filter results by product rating, users, deployment, and features. 
Then you can compare them side by side up to four at a time. They'll even show you a list of related categories for further options. And listen, I've been working in startups and in small businesses for the past, you know, for the for for over a decade. And you need to move fast and you need to move with smarts. And the last thing you want to do is get held up evaluating what software package to use because if you make a hasty decision, you might make the wrong decision and that impacts your business negatively. And if you take too long, you're not moving nimble enough or fast enough and you get stuck in uh, analysis paralysis. So Captera is like the perfect solution to identify the right accounting software or content management system, or whatever you might need to do. Find the one that fits your business and give you informed decisions so you're not just picking the software based on who has the better website, right? You know, you want to make intelligent decisions. And Captera believes that software makes the world a better place because software can help every organization become a more efficient, effective version of itself. That's so true. So no matter what kind of software your business needs, Captera makes it easy to discover the right solution fast. Check out Captera's free website today at captera.com slash AAA. That's captera.com slash AAA, C-A-P-T-E-R-R-A dot com slash AAA. Captera, software selection simplified. Thanks, Captera, for helping our business and keeping us informed. Thank you, Captera. All right, yeah. we don't need the bumper. We're still in hardware. Uh, mm -hmm. Bring it. Nick. Bring it. Nick, Keep you got going. the the Nubia Red Magic Three. Are you are you a smartphone gamer? Or Red like, Magic. That's what this is all about, right? Yeah, Red Magic. Uh, this phone is all about gaming. Uh, it's the claim to fame for this phone here is that it actually has a cooling fan on the inside to cool the CPU so that you can game to the max uh, and get those. 120 frames per second or 60 frames per second because the display isn't that good on here. Um, it works. It's uh, you can actually hear the the fan when you turn it on. You can actually just turn it on and let it stay on uh, if you, if you want to, uh, even while you're not gaming, just to make sure that your CPU is as cool as possible. Uh, but the one thing I really do like about this phone is that it is pretty much running stock Android. You have it's actually pretty closer to stock Android than a Pixel phone is, which is kind of crazy. Wow! And you've got the uh, the LED color stripe on the back to make yes, sure that everybody knows you're, you're using yeah. a gaming that's phone. How you know, that's how you know it's a gamer phone. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's how you know it's a gamer phone. And the the one thing that's disappointing about it is that. Um, it's really hard to turn on. You actually have to go into the settings to turn it on. There's not an app for it uh, unless you're in the gaming mode. Uh, so if you just want to have it on, uh, it's kind of a hassle just to just flip a switch and turn it on. You have to do like 15 steps in order to get it turned on. So that's kind of disappointing. But it, is, it does light up pretty cool. Uh, you can set it so that it, the LED on the back of the phone lights up when you plug it in and it's charging. Uh, but it does consume battery, so I don't know why you would want it running all the time. <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> yeah, it seems uh, like it's a good know. phone. It's extremely fast. Uh, has a lot of RAM. Uh, I've only been playing for, with it for 24 hours. Um, but you know, if you're looking for a device that's specifically tuned for gaming, it's a great option. And there's actually capacitive triggers on the top or the side of the phone that you can program. Uh, in game so that if you have um, different actions that you want to program through those triggers, you can just tap the side of the phone rather than pressing the screen. Yeah, and we're seeing this. I mean, it's obviously not in many phones because there's only a handful of gaming focused phones out there, but we're definitely seeing those shoulder triggers become more and more of a feature that are appearing in these types of phones. Do you think at some point we're going to have games that are like out of the, you know, out of the Play Store supporting the triggers if they exist? At that point, that could really be kind of an exciting inclusion to mobile gaming. Well, I think a lot of games actually do ship with support for triggers if uh, they have support for game pads. So a lot of games oh, okay. uh, out of the box are, have support are already mapped for game pads. If you connect a Bluetooth game pad, it's already mapped to the buttons on the game pad. Uh, I haven't seen anything that's supporting this specifically, uh, but this actually does have a unique uh, haptic engine on the inside that's specifically tuned for four different games only four. Uh, so if you're playing any one of those four games, uh, there's special rumble effects. Uh, if you get hit while you're, you know, if someone shoots you, something like that, uh, the phone vibrates differently than it would uh, any other game. 
Uh, so they are doing some fine tuning with app developers. Do that support for them uh, rather than something specific for gamepads. Yeah, interesting stuff. Uh, yeah, I would say turn off that RGB stripe, and uh, sure. yeah, at the very at the, the very minimum. Although five thousand milliamp hour battery, that's that's a lot. Of, maybe this you phone, do have yeah. the battery to just throw around at that point. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of do. I, I I got it out of the box yesterday, and uh, I probably downloaded 15 to 20 games to test out, probably gamed an hour and a half to two hours, tested out the camera, uh, and it's still sitting at about 85% battery life. So, wow. uh, And that's over 24 hours. I don't have my SIM in it yet, so it's only been over Wi-Fi, but even downloading that many games over Wi-Fi and playing around with it for that long uh, just shows how long a 5,000 milliamp, milliamp hour battery is last except it's really heavy this thing is a beast oh i'm sure and it has the pogo pins at the bottom so i imagine that you know you could plug into i'm guessing some sort of like controller kind of yeah they uh, have a unit. they have a dedicated controller that this snaps into they didn't send me that one unfortunately uh it would be interesting to see how the gaming experience is enhanced with that but they didn't send it out yeah come on zt send it send it <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe for the Red Magic 4, they've got you covered. Uh, Red Magic 3, awesome. Uh, look out for that if you are into the gaming phones. Um, this was some news that I've seen thrown around a lot over the last 24 hours. Leaks continue to get stranger and stranger. This time, it's the phone that hasn't even been announced yet. It's called the Moto Z4. Someone on Reddit posted how they saw the Z4 on an Amazon posting, uh, they went to the product page, ordered it, had it shipped, it arrived, and then did a hands-on of it. This is a phone that has not been announced, yet they were able to order it off of Amazon. The, the Amazon page now does not exist, so you can only find the page if you have a cached version of it. Um, but, I mean, no, all the specs listed on the Amazon page, 6.4-inch OLED uh, teardrop notch display, in-display fingerprint sensor, Snapdragon 675, which is actually a slightly newer processor than what you have in the uh, Pixel 3a. 128 gigs of storage, micro SD, uh, 4 gigs of RAM, 3600 milliamp hour battery, a headphone jack, courage port, as Mateo would say. 499.99 per the Amazon uh, screenshot that um, that he posted to Reddit, and it also ships. Shipped to him anyways with a Moto 360 Moto Mod attachment. This is what I find interesting is that he says in this this hands-on video that the Moto Mod attachment that ships with it and any of the Moto Mods that he already had for his other phones, they fit, but they don't fit uh, perfectly. Like the edge of the Moto Mod kind of terminates and there's a little kind of like edge that you can get your fingernail underneath and then it you know and then the phone kind of has a rounded edge so it's not like this seamless i with with previous moto devices that took the moto mod it's like the moto mod made the phone complete it kind of rounded the edges and really made it feel like one unit this feels like you're putting a hat onto your phone from the way he's describing it and i think i don't know if he's going to show it off right now maybe not but anyways it did not look seamless it did not look ideal <laughs> let's just say but um the question remains leaks you know often are intentional is this intentional <laughs> by no means <laughs> no way no way no i don't think so i mean yeah. the, amazon putting it up for order before a device is actually unveiled i mean yeah. the fact that they have it in stock already means that it should be coming soon who knows yeah absolutely uh, interesting nonetheless. And, uh, just when you think it, it gets weird with leaks, it gets even weirder. Real weird, isn't it? Real really weird. weird. Yeah. Um, all right. <laughs> we've, uh, we've got one app in the app, uh, section. So let's do it right now. Now. There we go. I was hoping the breaking news bumper was going to play. <laughs> no, it'd be the Android, uh, drama you remember that that bumper from years ago yeah <laughs> um all right flo you got this one i was trying to load it up and see if i had it on yeah. my pixel 3 i don't unfortunately the camera app crashed when i tried doing that oh, maybe you do have it cool 
Um, so what I'm talking about is if you remember back to Google IO, which feels like it was years ago, but it was actually a mere two and a half weeks ago. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I've aged a lot since then, by the yeah, way. <laughs> so all those <laughs> updates are officially rolling into the new camera app um, UI. So you're going to see a new carousel of options in the lens mode in the Pixel um, camera. You're going to see the translate feature come up. Um, you're going to see the live copy text. You're going to see the auto detect, um, which will figure out which mode you want the Google Lens to process in, basically. Um, new shopping mode which lets you point the camera at clothes and barcodes to find them online. And a new dining mode, which lets you point the camera at the menu to see which items are popular and the photos and reviews of those items as imported from Google Maps. Um, and of course, that's also going to include the tip calculator and bill splitting feature. Again, unfortunately, it doesn't seem that I have these on my phone yet. And my phone keeps crashing on this app. But if you yeah. have it, you can try it out now. Maybe it's like auto updating and not the whole the the whole line of you know bit of code isn't isn't there yet. You're just That's also fair. I, um I don't know. and you have to have Air Core, by the way, to have this enabled um right. because it uses all of that fanciness and um have fun with it. Yeah. I am gonna have fun uh translating this book about Christians in Germany. <laughs> You're going to do it all with your phone. Wow, that's a really small book. I do book. it all with my phone. It's a little book. Yeah, I know. I I bought it at some flea mar at a German flea market like many years ago. I don't know why. It it's was like, like a, a euro. Book. Anyway. I found out tonight that it was about Christians, by the way. I didn't know. You've had it for years. Thanks, you didn't Google know what Lens. It was about. <laughs> <laughs> well, Google I Lens just did what it was supposed to do. I mean, you, you probably forgot that you even had it. Things so small. It was just on your bookshelf, hidden by a bunch mm -hmm. of other books. You know, I'm not surprised. Uh, I'm looking forward to that feature. I thought that was a really cool demonstration at Google I.O. where it was like you see the menu, you point lens at it, and it like highlights the the items on the menu that Google Maps indicates that there are reviews around. So like, oh, this is a really popular item, and then you can pull up photos imported from Google Maps. I would do that anyway. That's, that's really cool. Like that's, you would Google the name of the restaurant or you would, I guess, try and Yelp it in mm -hmm. the past. Mm -hmm. But now you're just going to the reviews that people have already left. And I guess Google being the indexer, the search indexer that it is, indexes the mere mentions of certain meals and then has that. It's it's really going to be quite so helpful, cool. I think, and I can't wait to start using it. Mm-hmm. That is so cool. But uh, that also means that every time we go to a restaurant now, part of our process will be pulling out our phone, launching the camera and pointing it at the menu we're already looking at. Um, I think that... Maybe we don't need to do that. <laughs> I think that maybe we do. Oh, okay. <laughs> As a person who has gotten food poisoning from trying out a new restaurant just to try something new... Oh, well, okay. Say no more. Say it from that perspective. <laughs> For me, this comes full circle back to Google Glass, though. I mean, if you remember the first commercials of Google Glass about somebody putting them on in the morning and showing these contextual information as you're walking around the world, Lens is finally doing that. I mean, Google Glass is not a consumer product by any means, but uh, that's what their vision was. And Yeah. Absolutely. And if you could take the lens aspects and import that into like whatever Google's future kind of glass thing will be, if, if they ever follow it up, maybe they're just out of that entirely, but that would be magical. You're right. Well, that, it's that in the enterprise. Imported. Well, yes, yeah, I mean, right. It's, it's in the enterprise. It's going to compete sure have... with the hollow lens. Yeah. Sorry, Nick, what were you going to yeah. say? No, I was just going to say the same thing. Like they, they have the enterprise version of it. The question is, do they have an enterprise version of Lens right. or whatever software that they have mm -hmm. uh, on that? Who, who's going to be the one buying the enterprise version of Google Glass? To test that one out. John Deere. And then you will put them on. <laughs> and then when you go into the big tractor, you'll have an overlay of what every button does. And then you will never have to worry about getting certified to drive a tractor ever again. I think you're thinking of HoloLens. Google Glass can do the same thing, can't it? it? But it's not really an overlay. Like it's like a little. It's just a heads it's up. It's like a little window. Well, then it would just heads side. up do all the 
that really big button over there is for turning the motor on. Yeah. <laughs> also, John Deere tractors now are driven with an app, and they're all GPS driven, so no need. <laughs> 2019, no need. They're like folks. Drones. Yep. They're like drones. John Deere was actually at CES this past year showing off their big, huge combines. Uh, it was interesting getting in the cab and seeing all the tech in there. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, Ron, you have the email. I do have an email, and we were talking about this earlier. Christopher writes in says, I'm listening to your commentary on the Pixel 3a on episode 421 and its lack of wireless charging. I'm a big fan of Qi chi charging. I'm going to pronounce that right someday. Qi charging. <laughs> I even looked it up. Um, I have a few charging stands, pads, and pads around the house and the office. Nokia items from the days of the mm. 1020 and 950 XL. Mm -hmm. Here's the simple solution that can be found on Amazon for $12.99. A simple wireless charging receiver, which can be stuck on the back inside of a simple TPU case. Uh, with this phone, uh, with this, the phone never gets below 60 or 80 percent and sits on my nightstand overnight, showing the time on the display, and it's good to go in the morning. And listen, Christopher, that's great. I mean, these are good examples of low-cost uh, wireless charging options. I was doing some research in between last week and this week's show, and the estimates now are that the wireless charging market is going to reach over $20 billion by 2023, and that actually wireless charging is like surging apparently in terms of its sales. Hmm. That's only because more phones are supporting it, more, more products like this are available. And so more people are adopting it. I, you know, I think that's really great. Where we are right now, it still seems to me like a luxury and not a must-have. You know, and so when we're talking about making the the Pixel 3a affordable, when you're going through the list of features it needs to have to keep that affordable, I would cut wireless charging early in the process, just like Google did. I wouldn't even question it. Mm -hmm. I don't think I don't think the lack of wireless charging is going to affect the person who loves the camera and loves the price point. That's personally me. I don't know. Nick, what do you think? Do you think that the lack of wireless charging is a is a ding on the 3A or? I don't. I mean, it is a luxury item. I have, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe 15 phones in my trailer that have wireless charging. I have one wireless charging pad, mainly due to space constraints, uh, but I never use it. I, you know, wireless charging is slower than regular. Uh, you have to make sure you have to get it right in the right spot. Eventually, once they get wireless charging to the next level where you can have it within a foot, two feet of where the um, the charging dock is, uh, you know, just place a phone on your desk and it charges. That's a completely different conversation and becomes much more ubiquitous with our lifestyle. Uh, but a wireless charger for me is simply just saving a half a second of plugging it in and really doesn't add that much value. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I yep. completely agree. Completely agree. Uh, all right. We're going to thank this sponsor, and then we will get into the arena and show off a few apps. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Go ahead. Admit it. You think that cybercrime, silly you. It happens to other people. I don't know. It never happened to you. You may think that no one wants your data. Uh, hackers can't grab your passwords or your credit card details. They don't want it. They don't need it. Uh, if you think that, you're probably wrong. Stealing data from unsuspecting people on public Wi-Fi is one of the simplest and cheapest ways for hackers to make money. When you leave your internet connection unencrypted, you might as well be writing your passwords and your credit card numbers on a huge billboard for the rest of the world to see. Uh, that's why we use ExpressVPN here at Twit. I use ExpressVPN to protect myself uh, from all of this stuff. ExpressVPN secures and anonymizes your internet browsing by encrypting your data and hiding your public IP address. ExpressVPN has easy-to-use apps. They run seamlessly in the background of your computer, your phone, or your tablet. Turning it on is really just as simple as a single click. Uh, and bam, ExpressVPN protection is active. Using ExpressVPN, you can safely surf on public Wi-Fi without being snooped on, without having your personal data stolen. And for less than $7 a month, you can get the same ExpressVPN protection that I have. ExpressVPN is rated the number one VPN service by TechRadar comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And it's just super easy to use. Uh, protect your online activity today and find out how you can get three extra months free with a one-year package at expressvpn.com slash allaboutandroid. That's expressvpn, E-X-P-R-E-S-S, vpn.com slash allaboutandroid. You'll get three extra months free with a one-year package. Visit expressvpn.com slash allaboutandroid and you can learn more and we thank ExpressVPN 
for their support of this show. All right, and with that, it's time for the arena. Let's do it. So many enter, <laughs> but only one lives. Android Arena. Only one lives. Well, only oh, one lives. Very, the rest it's of so them. It's so harsh when you think about it. Only yeah. one lives. Yeah, it the is. rest of them. Yeah. What happens to the rest of them? I must know. Oh, boy. Okay, this is this is a rough one. I saw the results. It is the Jason. Wade County results before uh, going to see the results last week. Spoilers. Week's Spoilers. Yeah. So Hanger wins. That's team guest. 36%, uh, 37%. Skit, second place at 34%. Who had Skit? Me. Ron. Congratulations, Ron. Ron. Abstruct, third place, uh, right around 18%. And Sphera, that was my app, 11%. Uh, oh. Man, it sucks to right. in last so, place. So those aforementioned results, thanks to Wade County in the chat room, is indeed, Jason, you are now in last place with 41 points. I eek past you in third place with 42 points. The guests are sneaking up on Flo. They're in second place with 54 points, and Flo is sitting in, in first place with 60 points. So uh, it is it is a race. It is a, it is a tale of two races for the top and the bottom. Uh, but this means, Jason, that Oof. you go first. Wah, 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 wah. Wah. Oh, wait, or does Flo go first because she wasn't yeah, here? Yeah, I go first because I didn't go last week, right? Okay, yeah. all right. So Maybe. I'm shuffling things around. Everybody shuffling. No matter what, I go last. All right. Flo, you go that, first. Which, I have your app last, installed. Ron. I'll show it off while you talk about it. All right. So in my life, there's been heartache and pain, but at least <laughs> I've been able to track all of the time devoted to that with Toggle. Um, so Toggle is an app that I use. It's spelled T-O-G-G-L. And it really is just your run of the mill time tracker. And I know you're like, Flo, why are you selling us on a time tracker? Like, this is ridiculous. Um, but I'm here to tell you that the reason I'm selling you on it is because it's, it's been helping me run my business for the last seven or eight months. Um, Toggle it has been a really effective way for me to figure out what I'm spending my time on, where I'm spending too much time, and um, and kind of how I can how I can streamline my work time so that I'm not overworking myself kind of thing, you know, freelancing is a fine balance. And so Toggle's really helped me kind of keep that balance. So the nice thing about Toggle is that, and this is the kind of the bummer about um, not having it set up on the phone that Jason is showing off, which is that you can't see the fantastic graphs that it gives you at the end of each month. Those graphs are the things that I use to help do my invoicing. And so um, you can actually see a couple of the graphs in the Play Store listing. But for here, you would normally see like the pie chart filled out and you would see graphs of what you've been working on, where you devoted your time. And the thing about Toggle is that it also has a Chrome browser extension. So when you're working, whether you're working in Google Docs, which I work plenty of in, or whether you're just researching for something online, you can just toggle it on from the browser and it will integrate with your account and um, and then get uh, synced across devices. So you know how much time you spent from your phone or from the browser. And also, which is a really nice thing that Toggle does, is it integrates with your Google Calendar. So anytime you're taking meetings for specific projects, you will have that time counting as time that needs to be paid, basically. Um, I really like Toggle, too, because I can fine-tune the reports at the end of the month in case I messed up on something, which sometimes I leave the meter running without realizing it. Or if I forgot to turn off the meter, I can just log in from my phone and turn it off, which is really helpful. Uh, there's also um, a shortcut mode so that you can just use the at sign or the pound sign to uh, divvy up your work and what you're working on. And again, another reason I really like Toggle is because I can just use it from the browser. I can write like, I had to work on this thing again, and then I'll know what that means when I go back to it at the end of the month. And so it's just been a really, it's just a really nice way to, to lay out your time, what you're working on and figure out where you're being productive. If 
if how you're being productive is paying off, you know, and, um, I, I'm endorsing it because it's, again, helped me run my business the last couple of months. And it's been really useful too in these last couple of weeks as I've been trying to reassess my time and what I'm spending time on. Toggle has been really helpful because I have all this data that's aggregated from the last eight months. So like I know exactly now like what work is pretty much what work is worth taking on and what work isn't. So it's, it's a good app and it's free. Who doesn't like free? Free is good. Especially all the stuff I already have to pay for running my own business. So no kidding. Toggle. No E at the end. Right. Just T-O-G-G-L. Toggle. 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 Uh, excellent. That's a great pick. I love it. And it does that. It looks like it does it very well. That specific use case that it does, you know, dedicated to that use case. It Unfortunately, well. I can't show you my timesheets either because then you would know what I'm working on and I can't. Oh. show you everything I'm working on all the time. So, oh, come on. You know, you gotta, you, gotta keep it, you gotta keep it secret, especially all my secret projects that I don't want people to know about. We want to know about those projects. Not yet. <laughs> uh, stay tuned to the flow feed. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the branding too. <laughs> Toggle and the Play Store. All right. Um, so do you, are you guys familiar with Justin Kahn? He was the uh, of creator of Justin TV, entrepreneur. Oh, that's a throwback mm -hmm. name. Yeah. Well, you know, so I would log into Twitter and I would always, you know, I, I would check in the, uh, I would go into the moments tab and below all the stories, it would see like other tech journalists that you, that, that you might know or might follow, or I, I don't follow any of them, but it, it filters in people that you don't follow that fall into you know, other VCs or whatever. Like, anyways, my point being, Justin Kahn would repeatedly end up there and he always had these really great insights on just like, on like, like living a better life. You know, his, his, uh, he's done a lot, right? Um, but he's also done a lot of work in the last couple of years on just like exploring himself and being authentic and learning a lot about himself. And so I went and read through his blog and he mentioned an app that he's been using um, to help him kind of appreciate things in his life a little bit more. It's called Five Minute Journal. It's $4.99 is, is the cost for the app. And I had never heard of it before. I already do this in an actual journal. I don't do it in app form. I do it, you know, on those old things, you know, with paper and, and pen and stuff. Um, but this is a really great way to like take, take stock in your life and realize all the things you do have and, and help yourself, you know, kind of live a better life. So what is five minute journal? Uh, it's basically an app that, you know, as it says, it really only takes about five minutes in the, the morning or the evening. Uh, let's take a look at this. So this was, this was this, uh, the 26th. This was over the weekend. I was camping <laughs> not very far from my home. I was camping 10 minutes from home at the Petaluma KOA. Uh, anyways, in the morning, I would get a notification, and all these, these fields would be blank. It would say, I'm grateful for one, two, three. What will I do to make today great? One, two, three. Daily affirmation, I am blank. And you, if you take the five minutes in the morning and you fill this out, and then in the, in the evening time, you know, I would get a, a notification as well that said, what are three amazing things that happened today? Kind of like backwards reflection of your day. And you can also add a photo. So you could add a photo, either take it within the app or select from your gallery Jason or whatever. This is, this is me chilling on a really cold day by the pool because the kids don't care that it's a cold day. But meanwhile, I'm like, I'm bundled up in a sweatshirt and everything. <laughs> Petaluma KOA in all of its glory right here. Anyways, so that was uh, that was Sunday. You know, Monday ate apple smush, which is a recipe that I really like. You know, basically it's a way to kind of uh, to kind of log what you're grateful for. And hey, we could all do a little bit more of that. This morning, you know, what was I grateful for? Morning me time. I wake up very early at five thirty every morning and do a little meditation, do do a little reflection, all that kind of stuff. So I'm grateful for that warm weather and coffee because who isn't grateful for coffee at five thirty in the morning? Um, prepping for AAA is one thing I'm going to do to make today great, right? <laughs> Play a little guitar, take sugar to the dog park, daily affirmations, I am worthy, all this stuff. Like the more you do this, the more you create this conversation about yourself and your life, the more you believe it. And it's just a really valuable life practice. And I've come to really appreciate it over the last six months. So when Justin tweeted about this, I was like, damn, that's a really great app. Of course, his was for the iOS version. 
I was happy to find an Android version. It's called Five Minute Journal. It is really just super straightforward and to the point. There is, um, there's not a whole lot to it. it. It's another one of those apps that does one thing but does it very well. The notifications come in exactly when you program them. You can do them. You know, you can set that all up in the in the settings and everything. But um, it's just really great. You know, it's it's worth taking five minutes to reflect on your life. You will notice over time that the quality of your being changes when you do that. So that's what it's all about. It's called Five Minute Journal. Uh, improve yourself, improve your life, improve your outlook on your life. That's what it's all about. Five Minute Journal, four ninety nine in the Play Store. All right, uh, Nick, I have your app installed. I'll go ahead and show it off while you uh, while you tell us why it's so awesome. Well, my pitch isn't going to be nearly as good as your guys's pitch since. Mine is a lowly wallpaper app, uh, but it, anybody who has used a phone over the years knows how important wallpapers are. Um, there are dozens, if not hundreds or thousands of wallpaper apps that are out there uh, on the Play Store, and there's a lot of really good ones. But the one I'm talking about today is called WallP. It's W-A-L. P, and it's essentially a collection of the stock wallpapers that manufacturers ship on their smartphones. So oh, if you've that. ever wondered uh, what the wallpapers are on the Samsung Galaxy S10 and you wanted those on your phone, uh, this is where you can find them. And a lot of the other wallpaper apps have these in there, but they're just a random mess but here you can actually go by manufacturer and sort through i want a samsung wallpaper it then gives you the list of all the devices that they have wallpapers for you go and select the device and then it shows you the collection of wallpapers from that specific device and this app is essentially updated every couple days anytime a new device comes out or there's been a leak with some of the wallpapers or the software from that device that may include the wallpapers uh, the app developer uploads those wallpapers and the the app itself is actually really well laid out like you can categorize uh you can select by categories as i said selecting the manufacturer and then the device uh, go in and simply choose at random or go by chronological order so if you just want to see what's new every day if you're the type of person like me who changes his wallpaper three to four times a week um, I have, I have an issue. I will admit that, but I think there's a lot of people out there who are like me. Unlike my wife who sets a wallpaper and keeps it for six months. Uh, I like to change things up and that's one of the reasons because for that is I'm testing so many different devices all the time and trying to take photos of phones and doing videos, things like that and want an interesting wallpaper. And, um, a lot of people have tried to find these original stock wallpapers and this is simply uh, a better way to find them and that's all you're actually going to find in here i don't know if they're going to be hit by copyright because all of these are copyrighted images that all these manufacturers have licensed for their devices uh, the fact that they're resharing them uh, and the fact that they've grouped them by manufacturers and devices makes them a much easier target for somebody who might want to hit them with copyright claims but uh, please don't do that because I really enjoy this app. Anyone uh, who uh, enjoys wallpapers, I definitely recommend checking this out. It, it's one of my favorites to, to install on any new device simply so that I have a good selection of wallpapers to go through because any other app that's out there, they do have a lot more wallpapers. This one here, the collection is refined and you know that every wallpaper in here is going to be good. It's amazing. This is a really great resource. Wall P is uh, is the name of the app, and yeah, I mean, it's just really like <laughs> I always see these posts online when a new phone, you know, uh, uh, wallpapers for a new phone are leaked, and it's always kind of like, okay, well, I guess I got to go over here and download from this random place or whatever. I guess you just need to have this app installed and just wait for it to be you refreshed just there. Yeah, you just need the app and they do actually have uh, one custom feature in there. There's a blur custom slide bar. So if you like the wallpaper, but just don't like the fine detail of it and simply want, you know, the colors in the background, you can slide the blur bar at the bottom before you apply the wallpaper so that, you know, you, you get the colors of the wallpaper rather than the fine detail so that your apps on their home screen stand out more instead of the wallpaper. Yeah, no kidding. You can favorite them, favorite that. Uh, really cool. That is called Wall P. 
do a search. It's just one word, WALP, W-A-L-P, yeah. WALP, WALP, WALP. Okay, awesome, great pick. And Ron, great pick right. you, that you have too, because I I saw this oh, yeah. one as well. Oh yeah, this is. I'm not gonna. I'm, I don't want to get too cocky, but we're gonna do. You know, so Jason, you're gonna follow my lead, okay. and we'll explain what the uh, app I've chosen this week, which is called uh, Fire uh, Firefox Screenshot Go, um, <clears throat> and basically it's a screenshot app for your phone. And you might be saying, wait, don't hang on, just wait, Jason. Oh, I'll tell you what okay. to do. You might be saying screenshot app. But Android solved this problem. I can hold down my power button, make a screenshot. That's great. But if you're like me, you make a screenshot and then you get distracted. You make a screenshot because you want to send something to somebody or you want to remember something. And then you get distracted. You go to a meeting, you do something. And then you're like, oh, you either forget you took the screenshot or you can't find it because the Android file system, while we have access to it, it's not always the easiest thing to find things, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're like me, you take a lot of screenshots and they just get lost in the ether. Well, so now, Jason, if you go to your phone, okay, and let's just go to a web page. Let's just go to let's just go to let's just go to Google News, maybe, or let's just go to or let's go to or go to Flow Feed, maybe, or I don't know. Just go to something. <laughs> go to any uh -oh. any page on the website. <laughs> just a well, random page. Programmed. FlorenceION.com. FlorenceION.com. There we go. I know we have the rights to this. Okay, great. So, um, <laughs> so st take a screenshot of this, Jason. All right. Whew. Okay. okay, so you took a screenshot using the normal method and all that sort of stuff, right? Yeah. So great. So now go back to your your home your home screen or okay. whatever, you know. And now let's open up Screenshot Go. Okay, I need to give permissions. I give it the permissions. You got to let it to access your file system and all this sort of stuff. Get the go let's button. Get the, get, let's get the go button. Go for it. Okay. Let's get the go button. All right, I'll get um, the go button. And you got to let it display. All right. Okay. All right, cool. Just uh, skip that, skip that, because we're doing this and all this stuff. Okay, so now you see quick access to your screenshots. Apparently, you've only taken a screenshot of Super Mario Kart uh, and Flow Feed. <laughs> but let's assume you had hundreds of hundreds of screenshots in there, right? And you took the Flow Feed one, you know, hours ago because you want to find it. But you remember it had something to do with w with widgets, right? Isn't that what it said or, or whatever? In the in the search bar, yes, widgets. Type widget in the search bar up top. Oh, oh. With I know what's about to uh, happen. What? Yes. It's what? exactly. Oh, Firefox okay, has come out with, with an pick. app. <laughs> yes, this Firefox has come out <laughs> with an app that will allow you to search the text in the images you took. Ah, oh my gosh. Neato. This sounds like a lifesaver. Right? That's an OMG, OMG moment, right? Isn't that crazy? That's cool. So ad additionally, um, not and the killer app is just the searching the images. Now that said, if you take a screenshot of a photo and there's no words in it, right. it's not searchable. So whatever. Right. But now, now if you go back, let's go back to yeah. So um, go back to a browser, or go back to your screen, your your home screen or whatever it is. Okay. Um, they did add this little uh, transparent little button that you can move around on your screen. It's a little floating, the floating button there. That's their go button. If you want to use their method of taking a screenshot, if you tap that, it will, you know, it, it go through the permissions to say it's going to capture what's on your screen. And what it will allow you to do is it takes the screenshot and you can immediately organize it based off their organization stuff. This is for shopping. It's for finance. It's a chat history. You can create new collections. Let's say I want to make a collection of photos or, you know, family photos or things like that. You can you can create that. So now not only are you uh, having your screenshots available to be indexed via search via their OCR uh, technology within the app, but you can also organize the screenshots at the time of taking them which I think is key when you're using this because I take screenshots and forget about them. But then if I go into the app and I go, oh, you know, I, I took a screenshot. Let me look in that home screen collection. Oh, there it is. Poof. Right? Yeah. So it's magic. It's like butter. It's fantastic. Fire, Firefox screenshot go beta. Um, I got to say, remember a couple of years ago when we were loving, loving, loving the Microsoft garage and saying yeah. how they were doing such mm -hmm. great stuff for Android? I'm going to go forward and say Firefox has taken that mantle from, from mm. Microsoft, and they're doing some of the best kind of exploratory apps um, of what can be done on Android. And this is this is like a must-have app now. So That's cool. There you go. Love it. Yeah, very cool. That's really great. So, Firefox screenshot, go beta. It's free. Go download it and, and search for your screenshots. It's amazing. Firefox screenshot go. That's all one word. Screenshot go. Firefox <laughs> screenshot go beta. Awesome. Love it. All right. So that's four apps that you're going to need to install right now. You're going to want to because they're all great. Uh, Toggle, 5-Minute Journal, Wallpy, and Firefox 
or Walp and Firefox Snapshot Go. Screen, sorry, Firefox Screenshot Go. Ah, uh, so I'm yeah, getting it I all twisted. The, com- the competition, the competition in the arena is fierce. You got to bring your A game. Yeah. In all facets. Yeah. Uh, so you can place your vote for your favorite app by going to twit.to slash AAA poll 422. Twit.to slash AAA poll 422. And Victor is, appears to be having a difficult time, but he goes with the screenshots. Firefox screenshots go beta. Smart it's, man. Okay, Victor. Smart. Yeah. Okay. All right. You know. All right. Yeah, Ron could be staging a comeback here. You just never know. Well, Jason, I'm downloading your app right now. Yay. I would like to be grateful for things. There you go. Basis. There you go. It's good practice. I'm grateful for screenshots. Uh huh. I'm going to write about that in my journal. That, that's and the thing gonna, about. <laughs> and then I'm going to make a wallpaper of it. That's the thing about a, a, a gratitude journal. You can be grateful for anything, no matter how True. silly. Even screenshots. You can be grateful for screenshots. It doesn't matter as long as you profess it and declare it. Uh, and wallpapers are pretty cool too. Because uh, I mean, seriously, we all have wallpapers on our dang phones, right? Go we to- do. So, you know, there you go. Uh, I sure hope so. We better. <laughs> Although maybe we'd save battery if we didn't, if it was just a black I know, right? Background. If we just had a black background. It's possible. It'd probably that save a, a little good... bit of battery. Ooh, I'm going to make a wallpaper app that's nothing but black, all black wallpapers. Yeah, and just like test it. And and, and all it is is like a bunch of, uh, of wallpapers that's literally nothing but black. Um, One more black. None more, None more black. black, the wallpaper app. <laughs> uh, Nick, thank you so much for joining us. Not only thank you so much for joining us, but thank you so much for joining us from your vehicle because that is awesome that you were able to pull that off. It's been my pleasure. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and I it went from. I, per- I particularly dark, like how we went from, we went from su- from sun from a very sunny day to now pitch black outside. <laughs> I have a handful of LED lights and also the <laughs> OnePlus 7 Pro with the wow. flash on to so give me lighting. So a smartphone wow. powering this thing all the way around. That's amazing. I was going to ask. I wasn't sure if it was like your your laptop reflecting on you or what it was. but New that's, meaning of mobile journalism. I know, right? It's pretty awesome. Pretty great that you were able to pull this off. Uh, Nick, Fandroid.com, of course, is where you write. You produce video for Fandroid. What uh, do you have anything that you're working on right now, or anywhere you want to point people? I mean, obviously your Twitter. What do you want people to know? Uh, the main thing, of course, fandroid.com uh, or youtube.com/slash fandroid for our video coverage as well. I'm working on my Pixel 3a review. It's coming up, hopefully within the next day or two. It's going to be finished up. Uh, doing that in conjunction with one of our other writers. Uh, but then going to be getting to the OnePlus 7 Pro, which I'm loving yet hating at the same time. So we'll see how that mm. turns out once the review is done. Mm. Yet hating at the same time. That's the part that I'm going to be reading for. <laughs> I'm very curious. I'm very curious. Fascinating. Uh, Nick, it's, it's been a pleasure. And I really hope that you'll uh, come back and, and be a guest sometime in the future. We'd love to have you back. Definitely. Thank you. Uh, Ron, we'll start with you because I know you're sweating bullets right now. It's oh, really warm in there. You have no idea, my friends. You have no idea. <laughs> Apparently, the co-working space uh, doesn't turn the air on after hours, so I'm going to need to send an email to somebody. But, uh, <laughs> Every ad read Ooh. that I'm doing, I, I look over it's the screen and the summer. lights are off, and Ron's just <laughs> fanning himself. This is, this is my this... cool-down mode. This is what it looks like when Jason's doing the ad reads. That's exactly it. Is, it. It is summer in New York City, let me tell you, folks. And uh, But I'm so excited I'm here. Uh, um, next week, uh, tune into All About Android. I'm going to have some uh, cool stuff to talk about. Uh, so make sure you tune in in the beginning part of the show uh, related to what we talked about tonight. Hmm, there's a tease. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the meantime, follow me on Twitter at RonXO and on Instagram at RonXO. And, of course, go listen to my occasional podcast, Finale, uh, finalepodcast.com. We talked about Game of Thrones <laughs> last week. Um, which is a real uh, 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 my co-host has never seen a single episode so that was a lot of fun uh, and we're going to be doing uh, the Seinfeld finale as our next episode so very stay nice tuned. Yeah, the, so. I'm just excited you guys did this in the throes of just everything that has been discussed about it oh yeah. my goodness okay. give it a listen you'll enjoy it Flo I think particularly so there you go right on <laughs> finalepodcast.com thank you Ron <laughs> Yep. Thank you for dealing with the heat. Uh, Flo, looks like you've been working on some stuff for Life, ha- Life Hacker. What you got? Uh, I have been. So I've 
been catching up the last couple of weeks from Google I.O. still just being completely transparent about that. Uh, and so I'm running a little bit behind on some of the flow feed content. But while I'm working on that, you can head over to Lifehacker and you'll see that I just put up a feature today about how to properly clean your disgusting smartphone. And I'm talking about food particles, dust, olive oil, all the like random stuff that gets on your phone. So go check that out if you have a chance. Um, and as you can see, there is a dirty Pixel 3. Um, I made sure to rub that all over my face. <laughs> Probably wow. TMI did a bit, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We all laugh. We've all done it. I mean, we yeah, do it every I mean, time we use look, our I phone. Had to, I had to do it for the article, right? Um, and I also put helpful gifts in the article so you can see how to clean things. So please oh. go check out my labor. <laughs> I'd appreciate that. Um, and stay tuned to FlorenceION.com because there are good things coming. Uh, there are a lot of things coming down the pipeline. So stay tuned. And if you're not following me on Instagram at flow underscore feed, go do that. And if you're not following me on Twitch at oh that flow, go do that. Yeah, because Flow has like a dedicated setup for Twitch now. I... I do actually. Thank you very much. I do. Yeah, I know. You're taking. You're you're getting serious. Get serious about this Twitch stuff. <laughs> well, I figured if I'm going to be testing gaming laptops all summer, then I should probably try and like share the wealth outside of my little room. <laughs> awesome. So, watch me get back into gaming the next three months because that's right what's going to happen. Excellent. Thank you, Flo. Uh, and thank you, Victor. Appreciate you, uh, thank you Victor. <laughs> having, having to, uh, find some, uh, some, uh, B roll in the, in the TriCaster that wasn't so easy to find. Oh, no problem. I, uh, as far as what I'm grateful for, I'm grateful for Flo's gifts. I can watch <laughs> that for <laughs> a while. Toothbrushing the Google one. pixel case. That's a great idea. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. A good uh, one. You can do so much with baking dirty. soda. Uh, it does get dirty. Cases. Those and fabric those cases, cases get, get really dirty. Really dirty too, like really fast. Yeah, and don't forget about did you put the in paper there clip the in the Scotch port guard when thing. you're done? What was that? What was that? Did name? you put in there to spray it with Scotch Guard when you're done? Scotch Guard. I didn't think about that. Ooh. Mm. Bring Pro back tip. some luster. You know, I've got the gray one, so it doesn't really show the dirt. But my wife has the red one or whatever, and I mean, yeah. within like a month, that sucker exactly. was like. <laughs> It's like, wow, okay, maybe this has, maybe this is a lot dirtier than I even Unfortunately, know. Unfortunately, there's nothing to take out blue jean dye. So if you've got that on your shoes or your phone case, oh, yeah. I can't do anything for you. I'm nothing, sorry. Nothing that's, we can do That's for a killer. You. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can find me here uh, doing shows. I'm uh, just at Twit doing shows here. So uh, hands on tech a little bit later this week, Pixel 3a versus the 3XL, if you want to find that. You're not just that. doing shows, Jason. You're producing... Weekly Con content. content, 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 producing daily content. content. Yeah, yes. Thank you, Flo. I appreciate that. Um, also, uh, thank you. We've got not one, not two, but three live visitors here in the studio watching Woo, us. Sorry, uh, I couldn't be there, live visitors. <laughs> so they're watching one real one one in studio person and three TVs. Uh, Robert, <laughs> is it Kong, Kong, and Drew? Appreciate you guys coming out. Hey, there they are. Right on. Thank you for sitting awesome. sitting through the show today. It's always awesome to get guests. And when we get three of you, we really feel special. Wait, so are they, were they all come together or no, separately? No, separate. Oh, that's the best. You know, that's sometimes great. the universe does that. See? Hopefully, hopefully I've been they putting out the rumor. We are almost as popular as Hamilton at this point. So... <laughs> Well, I'm hoping Possibly that all three of them become lifelong friends from this experience. <laughs> right. so. they, yes. yes, they've been they've been throwing high fives the whole time. Awesome. Uh, it's it's been amazing. Um, everyone's going out for drinks after the show, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And if they need if you need recommendations, I'll let you know where to go. Uh, we have a survey for you for anyone that wants to help us out that focuses on how you use collaborative software at work. It's brief. It takes about six minutes. If you go to twit.to slash survey fourteen, you can participate in that. Uh, twit.to slash survey 14. We'd really appreciate it. Uh, let us know what you think about collaborative software at work. 
if you have the time. And we appreciate it if you do. That's it for this week. Leave us a voicemail, 347-SHOW-AAA. Send us emails at AAA at twit.tv. You can find us on Twitter. We are at Android Show. Uh, our Arena Apps list, that's every app that we've ever had in the arena, can be found at twit.to slash Android Apps. Show notes and past episodes can be found at twit.tv slash AAA. That's the most important page. That's where you'll find everything about this show, uh, including the fact that we record every Tuesday starting at 5 p.m. Pacific. Uh, you know, all of our audio video episodes can be found there. The subscribe links, YouTube links, everything is listed there. So if you like this show, that's where you want to go. And if you, if you want to catch us live, you can either go to twit.tv slash live for our live recordings, 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific Tuesdays, or you can come into the studio uh, like these three folks did today. Email tickets at twit.tv if you're going to be in the Bay Area and you can sit in the studio and make us feel just a little more special while we record this show. That is it for this week. We'll see you all next week on another episode of All About Android. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.